So because we record so late, I always get like completely ready for bed before we record. So I can just like immediately dive into my bed to go to sleep afterwards. But to do that, I take my contacts out and put my glasses on. But then you can see my ring light reflection in my glasses. And it's so, it like really annoys me. But maybe it's because you're like further away. But when you sit back, I don't really see it. Maybe it's because you're like slanted down. I don't know. It upsets me though. Our audio listeners are really missing out on this one. Whoa. Yeah, they're. Trisha's putting on a performance for me and producer Mebby right now. I okay. find it very admirable that you like get ready for bed at 9.30. Like, I wish I was able to do that. Why do, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand I just why feel, you can't. Because I dilly-dally because... too much. So most of the time, I get home from work around, like, 7.30. That's without dilly-dallying. I get home at, like, 7.30, and then between... Saying hi to everyone, kicking about their day, and then showering, and then eating dinner, and whatnot, you know? That all takes you two hours? It takes me a lot more than two hours. The thing is, I'm not, like, I'm not getting ready for bed at 9.30. I'm getting ready for bed when I'm ready to go to bed. Does that make sense? Yes. It just happens to be 9.30 or more like 8 45 tonight. Wait. You're everything for that. To be fair, Trisha, I didn't work today. Oh. Yeah. See, you didn't have to tell me that. Like, I would have so been like, <laughs> wow. Like, okay, time management. Well, my, th- my thing is also, for me, like, I love my phone time in bed before I go to sleep. Like, that is truly a period of time that I treasure in my day. Um, mm-hmm. and in addition to that, there's now like a TV in my room. Um, so I love my phone time and TV time in my bed, which That's really everything. motivates me to get into bed at the end of the night. I feel you. I feel the same way about my TikTok time in bed. So- Welcome to Beanbag Banter. Exactly. Took the words right out of my mouth. Um, This is Beanbag Banter, the podcast with Sally and... Sally. (laughs) I saw you think about it. I had to. Um, I have to. Did you know that today is nothing day? For, like, you know, those, like, weird holidays? I I looked up what today is. Those random national holidays? It's nothing day. Like, oh, like not that it's not a holiday. It's like the holiday is nothing day. Nothing day. And how does one celebrate <laughs> nothing day? How are you doing what I did? Now. Nothing. Oh, wait, that's everything. I actually did a lot. Today doing today. nothing. Doing nothing is everything. Wow. Put that on a T-shirt. Manager um, Lily, so trademark let's... that, please. Let's wait. Should that be your new Instagram bio? No, sorry. Really trademark that. That was so good, Trisha. (laughs) I thought that was a good phrase. Manager Lily, trademark that. (laughs) No, (laughs) doing nothing is everything. Wait, is that our DSDF? That's what I was thinking, too, but I didn't want to say it. Wait. We're cute for that. That Hello? That literally literally is our DSDF. If you don't know what DSDF stands for, seek help. Yeah. Okay. Let's Um, dive into our... Yeah. Let's dive into our bean bags and banters. Would you like to hit it off? Sure. Um, hmm. my bean, what do we start with? I still feel like I go back and forth between bean and banter. I start with banter and then bag and then bean, just because I think it makes more sense to, like, name the things that have already happened, if that makes sense. That does make sense. Okay, so my banter, my banter was that this past weekend, um, I did some pretty fun things. 
uh, I went to the aquarium with my cousin, who's actually 20 years younger than me. <laughs> like, we have a so- like a solid 20 years. I thought you were about to um, say 20 months old. Um, he's actually less than 20 months old. Yeah. So right. that was fun. Yeah. Um, this past Monday, had off from work. So I went to the American Museum of Natural History for the first time, which was bizarre Ooh. to me that I've never been there. Yeah. Really cool. The one. Really enjoyed it. The one. The one that's in the city? Yes. With the the one that's on the west. Like Night at the Museum yes. style? Yes. Yes. The one that's on the west side of Central Park. Um, that's awesome. And, and I've been really like dying to go to the planetarium. I'm so like against space exploration. I think we should use that money towards um, ocean exploration. However, I did, I did cry oh. when I, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was like the whole like, Essentialism, or like the fact that it was truly just so beautiful that I, I, like tears were streaming down my face in this planetarium, in this dome. So highly recommend it. everybody go and see it. Go see the show. I would love to go to a planetarium. I've never been. Um, it's your really story cool. About natural, the Natural History Museum though is making me think of The Catcher in the Rye because there's that whole part of the book where he like. Holden Caulfield goes to his little sister's school and sees, like, in the bathroom, like, kids, the little kids have written, like, swear words. So he starts, like, spiraling and then, like, has to go to the Natural History Museum to calm himself down. Okay, word association. <laughs> no, li- like, that's literally all I could think about. Sorry. Moving along. My bag. Oh, my God. This is going to sound... Ugh. My I'll bag is that I am I am trying so hard to be a person that can read on the subway, and I'm finding it rather difficult. What is what is the difficult aspect to it? Like my, I keep shaking, so the 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 book keeps shaking, so I have oh, to keep so rereading like, what I'm reading and like refocusing. Yeah, yeah mm. I can't sit still, so I'm moving all the time. And especially on a subway, when you're just, like, jerking around. Oh, let me not say <laughs> jerking around. Uh, when you're just moving around, you know. It's it's rather difficult. Do you, do you have, like, a long subway ride usually? Because I feel like, for me, like, like, on the metro I take, I'm not, like, on it long enough to be, like, focused on a book. So I'm just, like, wondering about your subway habits. It's... There. N- each subway itself is not long, but them together is because I have to take two subways and then like New Jersey Transit train. Right. So uh, in total, it's probably like forty-five minutes worth of just train rides. So you mean you're tr- are you trying on the like New Jersey train too? Yeah. So I that's the only like part of my day where I do get to actually sit down and read and like. Mm properly read and then between that when I'm bouncing from subway to subway like everything else is zipped up in my purse besides my book like I'm the person that's trying to read as I'm walking or trying in the subway because that's the only time as you're walking to read as you're walking so it's it's that is a danger to the public (laughs) oh my god it's okay you you do what you gotta do so that's my bag that it's it's pretty hard. So my bag or sorry, my bean is that um we had nine new people come into our office today. Seven from our overseas office and Ooh. two interns from Australia. Very interesting dynamic. Um a I lot bet. of people at once, a lot of new energy within the office. They're all here for, I think, more or less three months. So it should be, I mean, tax season is coming up. for everyone. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very interested to see how the office dynamic changes. Do you think any of them are friend-worthy? I mean, 
being that I, I spoke to them for a day, like, they're cool. I'll check back in next week. Yeah, we'll, we'll be on watch for this. We'll monitor the situation. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. What about you? What's your beanbag and banter? So my banter is that this weekend I went and visited my cousin. Um, she's like a couple years older than me, but I've never like been to her apartment where she lives, like moved post-grad and stuff. Um, so like I went and saw it and we like walked around and had lunch. Um, and it was really, really fun because I don't like get to see her super often. Like it's maybe like once or twice a year. And I've already seen her now like twice in two weeks because I also just moved very close to where she lives. That's um, everything. Yeah. So that was really fun. Um, and it also makes me happy because I know like our grandma, um, she always like really wanted the cousins to like get along really well and be very close and like growing up in like not just me and this cousin I visited, but like all the cousins, we weren't necessarily super close. But like I feel like as we've gotten older. We're definitely getting closer, so I just feel like my grandma would have loved to know that we did that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, my bag, so I have two bags. Okay. So the first one is that I hate, now that I work, that I have to get up early or, like, get up to an alarm, especially when there's, like, things on late that I want to watch. You know what I mean? If they're, like, the Emmys or the Golden Globes or now... This is preview to the bean to the bat be- preview to the bean. The, bean. <laughs> the yeah. Australian Open is on, like, and those matches go late. So I hate that I feel like I can't stay up and watch those things because I have to get up early for work. My other bag is that it is unfortunately confirmed that um Noah Kahan is Oh my god. A new <sighs> collaboration. Um with Sam Fender. Uh, so this, as I like mentioned on our Instagram story, this cut really is the deepest because although I love Casey Musgraves, love Zach Bryan, love Hozier, I love Sam Fender like even more. I, I think I put on the story a couple, like last week when this was teased a little bit that um, seven of my top 10 songs of 2022 were Sam Fender songs. Two of my top five of 2023 were Sam Fender songs. I have seen Sally. Sam Fender twice in concert. What? If you dance with me, darling. Dance with oh, wait, me, it... darling. Oh, stop. stop. I'm, literally, oh, wait. I'm literally getting upset because what is happening? I'm so sorry. This cannot be real. Like, I'm, are you... Sorry, it honestly, it's like, I'm not even like mad that much about it. I'm more just like, how is this happening? Because literally every single person I love, every single thing that I've loved, this man is taking from me. And it's not even like it was a couple and then it stopped. Like, it is continuous. You think he okay, did research sorry. on your life and he's like purposely doing this to you? No, see, that's the crazy thing. I know he doesn't know I exist, but subconsciously, like, this is still choices he's making that affect me. And I'm still thinking of the best way to frame my relationship with him in a way that we can reach out to his people to get him on the podcast because defend yourself against someone who hates you isn't probably going to do much for us. I'm workshopping it. I'm workshopping it. Because I do also have mm-hmm. a lot of respect for him and think he's very talented. But it's just like, it's just too much. It's too much. Sorry. I'm I thought it was very to... bold of you to, like, publicly say that you're going to listen to the song. No, I I know. But the thing, like... That must have taken I... a lot of courage. I watched, like, the TikTok clip that Noah Gahan posted probably, like, t- 70 times. Because, like, oh. that's how much I, like, <laughs> need to hear, like, new new words coming from sam fender's throat put that on a shirt (laughs) okay sorry we will move on i know i really jumped off on a tangent um but no it's okay it's really it's really affecting me and you know we'll get there we'll get him on we will 
Mark our words. Sam Fender, no. Well, he will be on the podcast too, but Noah Kahan will be on this podcast and we will hash it out live for you all. Oh my God. Pay per view tickets. You can find <laughs> pay per view tickets on beanbagbanter.com. Moving on though, my bean, and I kind of tease this, is that the Australian Open has started it, started, started on Saturday, I think. Um, and goes till not this weekend, but the weekend after. Um, it's the first major tournament of the year, which is super exciting. Naomi Osaka was playing again. She's already out, but fun to see her play. Um, get to see all my faves. Carlos Alcaraz already won his like first Ooh. round. Um, so I'm really excited to keep watching that. Like I said, it's tough because the matches are like weird times because it's in Australia, but I do what I can. And then also what started on Monday night was Love Island All-Stars, which, as we all know, I love Love Island. Um, So I'm really excited for kind of a new format of it. I think it'll be a little bit different than games. Um, And it also is UK only. So games was like UK, US, Australia. um, But this is just UK. So I'm super excited to hopefully see... A lot of people that I don't know, because I haven't seen every series from the UK. That sounds really exciting for you. And as for the Australian Open, have you ever, like, tried to just watch it the next day and just not go on, like, Twitter or Instagram, or would that be too hard for you? I, I feel think, like that would be too here's hard the you. issue I run into, is, like, objectively, I could try, fine, but I know, like, something would spoil it for me, whether it's a TikTok I see whether it's, you know, a post on my Instagram Explorer page. Like, so you really, no, you really have to, like, you really have to, like, hang up and hang out for the rest of the evening. Like, unplug. But I don't want to. Like, <laughs> but I don't want to. I, I, my perspective on things is I want it to all be perfect for me. I don't want to have to make any compromises. You're so cute that that's your, like, that's still, like, your your pov on on things like i want it to be perfect like you're everything for that like i I wish i had that mindset i want to be able to enjoy the things i want to enjoy the way i want to enjoy them but the way you want to enjoy it is earlier in the evening but it's not up to you (laughs) but i want to be able to um i want to be able to be on my phone and Say something crazy happens in the match. Like, I want to be able to go live on Twitter and see what people are saying. I don't want to see something crazy 12 hours later and then have to be like, what did people say then? And also avoid spoilers or just, like, wait until the end of the match. Like, these matches are long. And unfortunately, unfortunately, you're going to have to suck it up and just stay up later than you normally do. I know. I think that's probably, like, what I'll do. I can at least watch, like, the, the day sessions um the finals i know are night sessions which means that they're 3 30 a.m eastern time oh my god Uh, that late well because it's night in australia yo yeah so like 7 p.m is the start of the day session which is like i think not 9 a.m the next morning in australia Uh uh-huh and then 3 30 is the start of the night session which is i think probably like 5 or 6 p.m in australia i don't know the exact like time time change that must be really stressful for you i mean it's like it's okay right now because a lot of the first and second round matches are like my faves who are seated like top 10 against qualifiers so it's like you kind of know what's going to happen anyways um mm-hmm. but like say say carlos alcaraz has to play like i'm trying to think who's in his who's in his quarter so he has to play like ben shelton in the semifinals like i am going to want to be there to see that live and i'm not going to be able to no i get it don't get me upset about something that hasn't even happened yet okay oh my god <laughs> Let's stay positive tonight. I have a great suggestion for you. What? Well, I have a question for you. I have a question for you. Okay. Have you ever um, eaten oranges in the shower? No. 
Have I don't you really ever like heard oranges. about what? Yeah, I don't really like oranges. Like they're not a food. Who doesn't like oranges? Eat. It's not a juice I would choose to drink. I don't really like orange flavored or scented things. I'm kind of like an anti orange, to be honest. Wow. Wow. Sorry, but like, yeah, oranges in the shower. Why would I do that? Because, like, that's, like, an actual thing, apparently. Like, people, well, I'm not going to say people because I've done this now and I continue to do this. Um, But I was told that the hot water just, like, it does something with the citrus flavor and it, like, intensifies the flavor and, like, it worked. I peeled an orange and I took it in the shower with me and I ate it in there and I think that was truly the best orange I've ever eaten and the best shower I've ever taken. Do you think it was because you were eating an orange in the shower that you liked it better or did something about the orange make the shower better? No, I think it was because I was eating an orange in the shower. Like, that's the whole thing. Like, it's, like, been said that it's supposed to release endorphins and, like, stress relief and all this stuff. And I'm sure there's some sort of, like, aromatherapy element to orange. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm so happy for you. I, on the other hand, will not be participating or trying in that. But, oh, you know, DSD. I encourage. I <laughs> Wait, that was good. I encourage all of our listeners to eat an orange in the shower. If you're listening to this, pause it, go take a shower, you stink, eat an orange, and then go and onto then, our Instagram and comment what you thought about your experience. Or on our TikTok, you can comment on if this is a thing that was true for you as well. Get it? Because I'm not planning to post this as a TikTok clip. Did you want like a pat on the back for that one? <laughs> I want you to say, wow, like you really are, I want you to say, wow, you're really thinking ahead, Sally. Wow, you're really thinking ahead, Sally. Thanks. So speaking of fruit, um, I recently just had to go grocery shopping for the first time in my new apartment, like first time since I moved, and I forgot how much I hate grocery shopping, and not that I hate the actual act of it, because Trader Joe's is my happy place stop and shop is my happy place um but i hate having to plan out like what i'm gonna make and also when i'm spending my own money i get so like anxious about what i'm buying because it's like i have to eat this i have to use this or else i've wasted my money it's so difficult it is it's so difficult to i mean no i guess like people who actually like take the time and figure it out and like meal prep like they they've cracked the code but like I so get when I lived alone it was awful trying to figure out what to do when in terms of I get meal prepping too but my thing is like I would I would I would get bored of eating the same thing for lunch every day because oh on top of cooking dinner for myself and breakfast I have to think of something to pack for lunch to take to work like this is too much for one girl to do no one tells you how, like, hard this stuff is. Yeah. I I want tips for how people are able to, like, plan a grocery list that has their breakfast items, has their snacks, cooks them. I would say at least you need, like, three full dinner meals to cook and then lunches for work. Like, help a girl out. I'm so lost. And also, any things... Any fellow post-grads listening to this teach us how to not starve yes please and teach us how to be smart money smart financially smart with our grocery shopping um wait you should you should like do something with that well like keep this going as like a bit or a segment but my no like no 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 (laughs) no like you should be the one to like implement something that makes it easier for fellow post-grad people to efficiently you, grocery shop you should be the you should be the kickstarter of the campaign are you asking me to create an app like what exactly like what exact, what exactly asking are you asking you, of me i'm asking you to lead 
a movement. I'm asking you to be a leader, Sally. So are you a leader? I feel like in this department, no. I need I need to follow someone. I'm asking to follow. I feel like I can't even think of like anyone who like talks about these types of things. I'm sure there are people out there for sure. But like nobody comes to mind. Okay, how about this? Maybe I don't know, like next time I go to the grocery store I can make a TikTok about it. Is that what I should do? Oh my god, you're everything. <laughs> Like, what do you want from me? How do I lead the charge? Not my own TikTok. Beat by Banter is making a TikTok about it. Oh, my God. My other issue with, like, grocery shopping is I don't want to go multiple times a week. However, when you buy things and they don't, like, give you enough of something to last a week, if that makes sense. For example, I got these everything ciabatta rolls at Trader Joe's, and it was four. There are five days in a work week. How is four ciabatta rolls helping me? They're assuming I'm going to go out to lunch one day? Probably, but who are they to assume? Wait, that's actually so funny. I've never thought about that. Why is it four? I mean, I know, like, it's this specific one I got at Trader Joe's, but just, like, in general, and I know I could buy two of something, but like I said, I'm not made of money. But it's also like, why are you going to buy two of something? Because then it can go bad before you get to eat it. Then I have eight. You're just and one I person. Three for. Yeah. They need to make grocery stores that are specifically for like one or two person households. So that. That like, is the, the movement thing... you are going to lead. So that like the packaged things in there are like. Or maybe it's not a full grocery store, but it's like a market. So it's like. The packaged rolls, there are five. The granola bars, there's five. The the chicken thighs you're buying, okay? They're packaged, so there's enough for, like, two meals for one person. Like, two, two, you know, two meals for one person. So then if you buy, like, I don't know, what's another protein? Like, salmon, it's packaged, so there's enough for... Two meals for one person. You're giving me enough broccoli for one person. Not one head isn't always enough, and two heads is too much. I want a head and a half. Get her a head and a half of broccoli. Wait, that's actually so interesting. Have you like um seen those grocery stores? I think they're like out west. Where it's just essentially reusable stations where you bring in, like, your empty um, jar of detergent and you can fill it up there. Or, like, your empty Ooh. bag of rice and you can fill it up there. Oh, you need half a cup of peanuts. They ha- Like, you can just use a dispenser and fill up, like, your kind half a cup. Kind of as if you're, like, if you're, like, cooking for a specific recipe and you only need, like, a certain amount and you don't want the rest to go bad, that kind of thing. Yes. Like, it's it's more of, like, a, you buy the reusable container and just keep going back mm. to refill how much you actually need and pay for what you're actually taking. Using. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard of that, but that sounds awesome. Like, they need to implement those more on the East Coast. We need to look into that. Maybe maybe my, part of my charge will be opening the first ever one on the Eastern Seaboard. Wait, that's everything for you. Quitting my job, I found a new path in life. Grocery stores. I feel like Wait, that's not that's that like far such off. A dream. Everyone that knows me knows that I actually love grocery stores. I used to beg my mom to like not go to the grocery store without me so that I could go with her. Wait, you're so funny for that because me and my mom actually like we enjoy going to grocery stores and like trying different ones like we'll go out of our way to like go to a different grocery store or try a different one so it's like so interesting that you say that because i didn't know we had that in common we don't always try different ones because to be honest where i live there's not a lot of options but i don't know something about grocery Mm. shopping with my mom is just so awesome no it's great not always the healthiest option because she doesn't 
<laughs> she lets me get everything I want, and I can't. I she can't be doing that. What do you? Oh. Yeah, you I'm a child when you? it comes to the grocery store. Yeah, I do. I don't know why this happens to me when I go to the grocery store and I look at things in the aisles. I'm like, I've never eaten a th- eaten in my life. Like, I literally no, don't they, know what I... They are coming out with new things every day. Every day. Bro, I saw... I saw... I Oh, my God. So, the other day, I was craving cereal. Like, I have not craved cereal in so long. I needed cereal. And we don't eat cereal in the house, so I had to go get some. And... They had an IHOP blueberry pancake flavored cereal. I feel like I've definitely seen that. What the hell? I okay, like that's the thing. When there's new things, you want to try them, but you don't know if you'll eat them, and you have to pay for them. Like that's why they need free samples at every single grocery store of everything. Okay, like that's not gonna work logistically. I know, but okay, maybe if they get something new like that, they can have a free sample of it. The issue I run into is I like forget the things that I like to eat, if that makes sense. Like, oh, I know I need snacks because I like a snack. I've never eaten a snack in my life. I don't know what I like to eat as a snack. Like, that is a experience that I have at grocery stores. Wait, I get that. Like, you have all the options in the world, but you just don't know. Well, it's, it's, and the thing with snacks is sometimes you don't know what you need until you're in the snacking moment. Exactly. So what if I buy, like, goldfish? Am I going to want goldfish in two days? Who knows? Ask me again in two days. You know? They sound good right now, but are they going to sound good it's, forever? I might want a banana tomorrow. Who knows? And now you've got to buy bananas and goldfish, which is not financially friendly. I don't know if that's a problem that can be fixed, but it's a problem we experience. Teach us. Teach us how to effectively and efficiently grocery shop. And make sure to put oranges on your grocery list. Okay, and now, now we can move on from this topic. Um, okay, so do we want to do the last few minutes, last like five or so minutes on the Emmys and Mean Girls? Emmys, Mean Girls, pop culture. Okay. Um, so I know you said you didn't watch the Emmys. I did. I would say I probably watched like sixty percent of them. I just figured like I the Golden Globes were a lot, and it just happened. And as exciting yeah. as it sounds, I I really couldn't find it in me well, to sit there and watch. The unfortunate thing was one. You're right. Like. The Golden Globes just happened, which had pretty much mostly the same, like, categories and nominations and winners, except the Emmys had been pushed back. They were supposed to be in September. They were pushed back. But the way it works is the period of, like, eligibility was June of 2022 to, like, June of 2023, I think. Oh, wow. So... For example, The Bear won Golden Globes for season two last weekend, but this weekend it won the Emmys for season one. Oh, that's so annoying. I'm so glad I didn't watch. Yeah, it didn't really bother me that much Like when I was watching it. I felt like, I don't know, maybe the timing was weird because then somehow season four of Succession was like included in both of them. So my math could be wrong there maybe depending on when season four of succession came out like i don't know and like golden globes eligibility but season four of succession was at the emmys and the golden globes so and also like Mm. white lotus season two which came out you know fall 2022 they obviously weren't at the golden globes but they were at the emmys wait season two came out fall 2022 that long ago no no you're right sorry it's fall 2023 wait yeah yeah no no fall 2022 fall in no way was this past it's... fall was this pa- no was this past fall because it was when we were in college it was airing when we were still in college you're telling me the new season or the most recent season didn't come or it came out over a year ago 
Yeah, exactly what I'm telling you. I think you're forgetting there was a strike in there where, like, literally every project in Hollywood was put on hold. Okay, I am forgetting. Wow. I think if the wow, strike had wait, happened, we would have of... been, like, gear. we would have been gearing up for, like, the premiere of season three. Yeah. Whoa. Wait, that's wild, actually. I felt like just yesterday, you know, like, we it, were talking about, oh, my God, like are you guys watching It does feel like just yesterday I was watching two? Aubrey Plaza throw a fit on my screen. No, she is everything. She was nominated. She didn't win, though. I think she was nominated. Um, Aubrey, if you're listening to this, when you're listening to this. Her dress is really cute, though. I really liked it. It was, like, a cute, like, light yellow number. Um. Mm. I will say for the, like, big winners, as in, like, limited series, actress, actor, show, comedy, actress, actor, show, and um, drama, actor, actor, show, essentially the same winners as the Golden Globes. So you had um, Stephen Yun and Ali Wong won for Beef, Beef won limited series, um, Iowa Debris and Jeremy Allen White won for The Bear, and The Bear won comedy series. Um, Matthew McFadden, Sarah Snook, and Kieran Culkin won for Succession. Succession won drama series. So you really, like, didn't miss that much. One thing that was really fun was Kieran Culkin cried in this speech, and he didn't cry in the other one, so that was really adorable. Oh, Wait, cute. I will say this, I don't know if it's maybe the Emmys matter to them more, but, like, this felt more of a very final Succession moment. Maybe, I don't know if this is, like, the last show they're, award show they're at together, but I'm sure the SAGs are still coming. But everyone seemed much more somber and, like, a goodbye here. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it probably is one of, like, their last award shows, like, all together. Oh, wait, that's sad. I know, it is really sad. Because it, it, there was also, you know, a lot of kissing on the lips going on between the cast members, so I think they're all very close. Speaking of kissing on the lips, when Bear won Best Comedy Show, um, Eben I saw that Mossberg literally made out with I, the producer, the creator of the Bear yeah. on the stage, and it just it was cute at first, and then it was like never ending. The kiss was no, never no. ending. I saw that on Twitter. Someone was like, "Hey, yo, like his wife and kids are watching. Like, lay off." Straight up, the longest kiss I've ever seen. The one between. Kieran Culkin and Brian Cox was like a peck, a one second peck. This was, I'm sure there was tongue involved. Yeah. Everybody's macking everybody. Shit. Hey, COVID's over. Um, Speaking of things in the pop culture world, I feel like I need to mention this because I apparently am the only one who feels this way about it. I mm-hmm. loved the Mean Girls movie. Loved it. Okay. Okay, okay. I was advised not to watch this movie, not to waste my time. You, you are, I think, like truly it. are, I think you, you truly are like the it. only person I've heard that, like, has enjoyed this film, Can this I musical. Give my spark notes on what I loved about it and why I loved it? If you can give it in, like, two minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. Starters, it was extremely fun. It was just very fun. The, maybe... The theater I was in was packed. Everyone watching it was having fun. We were laughing, gasping, like at all the right parts. Um, Renee Rapp was fantastic. I really liked Angori Rice as Katie. Um, The music did leave a little bit to be desired. Most notably, Angori Rice does not have the voice for the theater. So her like singing wasn't great. It wasn't bad, but it was not like Broadway. Um, I loved Chris Briney in it, and I was not expecting to. As you know, we put him in the who territory, but I swear to God, that whole movie, I was giggling, twirling my fingers every time he was on stage. I loved him in it. Loved him. Loved him. Oh, wow. I think he was so great. I'm sure Mevies loves to hear that. That's why I was saying on our story, I was like, I owe producer Mebby an apology because... There is something so, there's something to really treasure about Chris Briney. Um, Chris Briney. <laughs> I also, during watching him on screen, I was like, thank God that he is in a long-term committed relationship 
because I think if we had to watch him go through his like newfound Hollywood fame ho phase, like that would just be so detrimental for everyone involved, for you. including myself, including myself. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm glad I you enjoyed you the watch- movie though. I will say. I understand parts where some people might have cringed, but I think that's because they don't understand how theater works, and a lot of this stuff, like, would have worked. Like, you would have seen similar directional things happening if you're watching a stage production of Mean Girls, as you saw in the movie. So, like, I feel like if you don't understand that part of it, like, that is why there are things that are like, what is happening? Does that make sense? You heard it here first. Sally is a closeted thespian. Um, I, I've never been shy about loving Broadway. Speak your truth. Live your truth. I am, and I don't always let anyone. Have. Don't let anyone poo on your parade. Shine bright like I a don't. Diamond. I love. Pop I off. love Broadway. Pop that puss. I don't love everything on Broadway, but when it's good, it's good. <laughs> Speak your truth. All right, and I think that is it for today's <laughs> episode. Um, With that being said, doing nothing everything. is everything. Doing no- <gasps> stop. <laughs> you heard it here first. New Instagram bio. Doing nothing <laughs> is done. everything. And follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Beanbag Banter Pod. Listen to us on Apple and Spotify and rate us five stars. Leave us some comments. Let us know how you're doing nothing this week. Because doing nothing is everything. Bye.